Bush tank review. View. Would you believe me if I told you they were eating duckweed? If you didn't know, duckweed is this floating plant I'm scooping out. Oh, I know. I think we all know too well. I've been straining and dehydrating this stuff for six months now. I use craft mesh to keep the duckweed from falling. I've never dehydrated anything in my life. I don't own a dehydrator. But if this is what I think it is, might be a really good investment. But what if any nutritional content does duckweed have? More than you think. Yeah, I think duckweed is like a super food. Now you know what we should do with all the duckweed we scoop out from our tanks every week. Eat it. I think it's packed with protein and a lot of vitamins? Doesn't like athletic greens use algae and duckweed? Right, protein. Higher concentrations of amino acids. I bet vegans know all about it. It's a very sustainable food source as well. Also has high concentrations of trace minerals, pigments, and xanthophyll, whatever that is. I think highly pigmented food is, don't quote me on this, but antioxidant rich, which is superb for your health and anti-cancer. In short, it's full of good stuff. By the way, a lot of things are happening here. There's a lot of steps to this process. I'm a pretty lazy person. Person. I don't know if I'm down. <laughs> you want the duckweed to be super dry and crunchy. Why this sounding kind of yum yums? You know, Asian people love seaweed. Dried crunchy seaweed snack. Is this what you're telling me it tastes like? Is this even for my fish? <laughs> Whoa, that kind of looks like matcha. Am I the only one? <laughs> I'm using agar agar to make it a gel food. It's derived from algae and is a plant-based gelatin substitute. Nutrition only adds some fiber and calcium to the mix. Dude, this is like a whole ass food, man. There is nothing missing from this. I think duckweed with this agar agar is cure all. You don't have have to eat anything else. There's an ingredient list and that's really starting to look like matcha. That's just straight up cursed forbidden matcha, dude. You're you're literally whisking the matcha as well. Okay, that kind of looks Ooh. That do be looking like my algae wafer is not gonna lie from Hikari, but a premium whole foods version of it. I still am shocked this experiment worked out successfully. Not just successfully, I mean, look at the health of those fish, man. It is pure heaven, pure enjoyment there. That's a lot of effort paid off, a lot of ingenuity. This is the infinite food hack for your fish. How are you gonna run out of duckweed? You won't, that's the short answer. Bring this to my next potluck. <laughs> that's an incredible comment. Forbidden matcha, yeah. I was not the only one thinking that. That is some high-grade Miyazaki Prefecture matcha right there. I recently pulled some duckweed out, let it dry for a few days, and dropped it in my shrimp tank. They loved it. Yeah, you could also just do that. Like, fellow lazy person right here, quite obviously, like myself. I used to do that as well. Kind of by accident, actually. Because sometimes I scoop out the algae and I put it in a little Tupperware container and I forget about it. And then a week later, it's dry. And I'm like, hmm, feels like my shrimp would love this. Surely they do. Some of them come back to life, though. You gotta be careful. Zombie duckweed. You could probably do do this with a lot of plant trimmings. Yo, brain blast. People with high CO2 tanks, not just that, but like we're talking frog bit, but salvinia, water lettuce, elodia, all the plant trimmings from your high CO2 high tech tank that you have to trim every week. Don't you feel bad throwing that away? That's crazy. I wonder if they're all edible though. I know duckweed is definitely edible, even for human consumption. You can start your side business of selling these nicely made dehydrated but gelled versions of very plant-based, very sustainable, organic, homegrown, small, local business fish food. If I started one, I'd call it Wang's Gourmet. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey guys, thank you for tuning in. Glad you can make it. It's time to talk about the sponsor of this video, you guys, for smashing that like button and checking me out on Patreon. You get perks in return like Discord, where you can submit your fish tanks, talk to 2,000 plus fish keepers all around the world, discount on my merch. Let's get that smash like button for shortest ass segment on YouTube. Mercedes Men's. I love that name. Sent in their 12 gallon long tank with eight white cloud mountain minnows and probably some snails here and there. A 12 gallon long, don't mind if I do bro, that is perfect. Love the Oko stone structure. Not sure about the wood. There are probably better pieces out there, but you know, it's not that bad either. It's just that compared to your Oko stone structure, it is lacking some complexity. It looks like you just plopped it down there and caught it a day. I would maybe detail it with a bit more Oko stone or take it out and replace it with smaller Oko stone structure to balance. Thick substrate, plants are ready to carpet for you. Perfect stocking of white clouds, powerful sponge filter, 4.34 out of five, keep it up. Do not overcrowd, how? There's not room for a single fish. <laughs> 0.75 gallon beta cube. Give me that cube, boy! It's called a beta cube, but they're recommending these other species. Yeah, it does indeed say do not overcrowd. What do you mean? Then make a bigger tank. It is actually impossible not to overcrowd this, even with the suggestions here. Even with something as old and archaic as the one inch per gallon rule. All these fish are about an inch, and you don't have a gallon. How are you? 
what? Why would you even say do not overcrowd? This is this is a paradox. It doesn't exist. This is like that time traveling scenario where if you go back in time and kill your grandpa, then you cease to exist. So you can't go back in time to kill your grandpa if you didn't exist. So then what happens if you do? What happens if you put anything in this cube, but it says do not overcrowd? It's not one inch per 0.75 gallon now, is it? Stupid. That Birdman sent in their 60 gallon. Now that's a good size. New setup, community tank. It's got some neon tetras and I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. I literally can't tell. There's some corridors in here as well. Love the Seiru stone. And I really enjoy that stump because it has this very unique line coming down here. I've never seen that before. And it really works. You found a really nice piece and you worked around it. Perfect. 4.5 out of 5. Keep it up. My LFS has stepped up their beta game. This is what I've been waiting for. Well, I mean, okay. I'm gonna give it to them. Good job. This is good job. It's artificial, but they get more room. It's okay. All right. The husbandry is clearly better. It's not a cup. And not everyone, I hate to say it, even likes the natural aesthetic of this hobby. They like to keep it artificial. A lot of the people that are willing to spend money on a new betta fish are people who just like artificial tanks. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you have the right husbandry. It's not that hard to provide good husbandry for a betta fish even if they're going into an artificial tank. No fish is gonna die if the color of their substrate is pink, but they will die in a 0.25 gallon bowl with no filter heater and fed half the container of their fish food every time because you think that's how much you need to feed your fish. That's the real reason. Husband not aesthetics. No matter how much your boy likes a natural tank, let's not gatekeep here. They did a great job. $50 used. Beta Fish Aquarium Starter Kit. Indeed it is $50 and it says 1.5 gallons. And you do get a heater with it, but that 1.5 gallon tank used is not even $25. I mean, it would be $25 new. <laughs> Why are you selling it for $50 used? That heater is not worth it either. You can find a heater on Amazon these days for like 10 bucks, maybe 20. And that's new. I don't trust heaters in general already. I ain't gonna trust a used small heater like that, bro. This guy's crazy out of his mind. Song Tae sent in their 32 gallon tank with Corydoras, a lot of different kinds of rainbows, different kinds of tetras, a L144 blue eye pleco. Sounds fancy. I wouldn't know. I'm not rich. And it's their first time aquascaping using wood. I wouldn't be able to tell because that is a superb wood structure behind all the amazing textures. Look at the Hygrophila, Panatophyta. Oh man, the Ludwigia, so red. There's like accents, there's like accents of red on the substrate as well, matching the nice red rummy nose tetras. A superb corner heavy scape. The lines of the wood is dreamy. Should have been scaping with wood much earlier. Size and dimension is made of dreams as well. A 32 gallon cube, are you kidding me? Properly stocked. 4.89 out of 5, keep it up. Training my army of a mono shrimp. Wait. Wait, 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 you're kidding me right now. You're telling me you found a way to breed a mono shrimp and those are just a mono shrimp free floating fry right now? Or I guess I should call them larvae, free floating larvae. That is super cool. I've actually never seen a mono shrimp free floating larvae. It looks like they're all being attracted to the light you're shining. Wow. That is incredible. I don't know if you know what you have here. If you successfully breed a mono shrimp, which how did you do that? In captivity? In your own home? Is it getting easier? Are people just finding out how to do it nowadays? Cause I want to get in on this. This is good business, bro. Not to just everything is about money, but like, you know, times are tough out here. And if you enjoy making money with your hobby by breeding some awesome Amano shrimp, just maybe even giving it to your friends, you don't have to sell it, I guess, but that's a market right there. If you, <laughs> if you have a way to make more Amano shrimp like that, they don't come cheap. One of my local fish stores sells them for $4.99 each, and another one marks them up to crazy heights, like $12 to $14.99 each. I can't believe, yeah, I can't believe you found a way to breed these in captivity in your own home. Congratulations. And they look super cool. They just love following the light. That's amazing. This is the future of the algae eating army. Finally got to see a shrimp molt. Oh, 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 oh. Looks like he's doing something. Looks like they're about to throw up. That, that's me after a heavy night's drink. Damn, that looks crazy. Man, they are really just like bugs, eh? Oh, bro, blast it off. Oh, immediately someone's eating their exoskeleton. It's kind of gross, but I get it. Sometimes I pick up my little nails here. Nutrients. Thanks for filming this. I've never actually seen my cherry shrimp do this in real time before. Turned a scavenged sand dollar into a bubbler and it actually worked. What? I'm assuming the sand dollar is um dead, right? Oh, it works exceptionally well. The bubbles are a little big though. I mean, it's kind of like a sponge filter, I guess. Sand dollar dies. <laughs> You're like hippity hobbity. This is now my property. It's kind of morbid in a way. <laughs> You're using like the porous dried up corpse of what was once an animal. Very interesting. Ah, human 
humans so ever more creative with it. What's next? My deceased pet dog's femur is now my sponge filter because of the porous marrow structures. <laughs> I'll stop. Better changing color. Okay, this is how it started versus, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> is that the same beta? Are you telling me? Bro's got that multiple personality disorder. It's the marbling gene. He may very well continue changing colors throughout his life. Pretty cool once you know what's happening. That is very, very cool. I would really d try to document all the different colors, all the different life stages, the different identities this fish takes on. Five out of five color changing fish, bro. Dead shard sent this 20 gallon tank. It is still cycling, but they'll add shrimp, tetra, raspora, and it is their first tank in 10 years. Welcome back to the hobby. You are clearly on the next level. Crazy Monte Carlo carpet. It's growing in. The Vallis, already trimmed once. Looks like maybe Rotella, Rotundifolia, or Moneywort. Got some Hydrocado, Tripartita in the corner. Lava Rock structures. This guy's old school, baby. Accented with the Anubia's Nana. The Choya wood, I could have done without. But you're adding shrimp in there, and you know how much shrimp love Choya wood. I might have just place the choya wood behind the structures so they can enjoy it in their own shrimp verse. I just don't think the choya wood is helping with the aesthetic here. It looks a little bit gimmicky. Other than that, this is crazy. The Elodia going wild in the back. There's layers to the background. You don't see that often. You really used the 20 gallon space here expertly. 4.78 out of 5, keep it up. I thought you might like my tiniest aquarium art. Bro, that is crazy. I don't know how you made that, but you should make more. You should make different themes, like a Corridorus theme, a Cooley Loach theme, Neon Tetra theme, Beta theme, keep it classic, shrimp theme, and just sell it. This is gonna sell. And if it's fairly priced and the shipping isn't too crazy, your boy wants some. Give me some of that. They're all $1. So if you play that back, that was like $7. What? I'd have a proper fish room by now if I was loaded, okay? My fish in the perfect place for a picture. My fish when I get my phone out. <laughs> Yo, every time. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe God has something to do with it, maybe? Like, um, I'm getting passionate. I finally found it after 15 years. The scroll of truth. There isn't a right way to decorate a fish tank. <laughs> oh, oh, our aquarium's getting some heat over here. This reminds me of when the white tiger guy in Kung Fu Panda finally gets his hands on the dragon scroll and looks and it's empty. But it was the reflection. You are the dragon warrior. You just had to look in the reflection and accept. Dad, why is my sister's name Rose? Because your mother loves roses. Thanks, Dad. No problem, Seekin Prime. For me, it'd be like, no problem, Endler's Live Bearer. <laughs> Imagine if your name was Endler's Live Bearer. Trade offer. I receive a bag of dirt. You receive $80. What do you think? Fair? The local fish store is like, yeah. $80, you said? Is that before tax? You know what? Let's do it tax included. Uh, I'll throw in some extra dirt for you. That's how I feel every time. Sometimes it's a stick or some leaves. <sighs> Another marketplace find, no words. Yep, I, I missed you, marketplace. This looks personal. This looks like this person hates goldfish with a passion. Welcome back to the end of the video. Someone commented like a few weeks ago, Chris really ruining Mondays out here saying it's the end of the video. I have to at one point, it can't just go on forever. There's next week y'all. But if I don't say welcome back to the end of the video, people are like, Chris, how dare you? You didn't welcome me back to the end of the video. Who, who do I go with? You? <laughs> well, hope I made your Monday go just right. Started your week off with a blast. Before I let you guys go, though, we need to address this week's katwa. What's your favorite exercise to do? And if you work out, what's your favorite, like, lift? I don't actually have any favorites, but I do like how I feel after the workout, knowing that I went and knowing that I'm doing something good for my body. And I also know the saying where it's like, if you find a sport you enjoy, then nothing feels like exercise. It just feels like you're having fun. And I truly believe that. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys there. If you enjoy, please smash that like button. I'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to get your hands wet. Tetra, 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 we in a spot coming in hot. Ventral fin dot, acclimate that. With my shoal at, cure my fin rot from Karasiformis. Super retro road on, hold on. There's not another fish that you can wish for. Live fam says, I finna one, I finna gone. Three days without furt, I'm an addict, like fanatic. I'm a baddest, no tabs, only dirt. My Cory gang, so loyal, black tetra go skirt. We came to play, came to silence, gang.